Good morning, hockey fans. This is Stephen Heisler with HighSockey.com, the victorious hockey company, and the Junior Hockey Discussion Group on Facebook. You are watching the Junior Hockey Morning Show. We are on the World Sports Broadcasting Network, WSBN.TV, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, who knows where else, your living room, in your car, on your phone, on your iPad, on your desktop, on your what's that other thing? A laptop, anywhere you are watching today or this morning. Hope that you're having a good day. Today is Wednesday, March 15th. We're more than halfway through March 2023. Today's topic, North American Hockey League South Division. We'll continue our pre-playoff rundown in each division four days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday's the South Division, and here we are. Fun times. For you, it's Wednesday morning. For me, it's Tuesday night, 10 o'clock in the evening. I have to go see the dentist tomorrow, get tortured. My wife's grand idea. I think I did something wrong, and this is her idea of punishing me. Don't like going to the dentist. I'll bleed. I'll suffer. I'll cry. I won't cry. It should be fun. But, to, but the next time, on Friday morning, I'll be all red tooth and all that stuff. It'll be great. We're going to have a lot of fun. So it looks like the North American Hockey League South Division has their four playoff teams with 11 or less games to go for each team in the division. That's the reality after both Amarillo and Odessa failed to gain any ground over the past weekend while getting swept. Yes, it's mathematically possible for the teams to get back in, but that would take a combination of a meltdown of New Mexico and either or both teams winning almost all their remaining games. Yes, about the same chance of me winning the Powerball. Unlikely. I play, I don't win. Oklahoma Warriors are 39 9 0 and 1, 79 points. Garrett Roth and the Warriors took care of business against the Ice Rays at home as they moved closer to securing the division's regular season championship. Beating the teams they are supposed to beat, that's the mark of a team heading into the right direction. Amarillo is in town for three games this weekend. Can Oklahoma get max points and extend the win streak to six games? Yes, they can. But will they? That remains to be seen. Number two, Lone Star Brahmas, 31, 11, 2, and 5, 69 points, a full 10 points behind Oklahoma. Dan Wildfunk Brahmas got last weekend off and should be rested and more than ready for the weekend's visitors from New Mexico. Lone Star visits the Ice Wolves the following weekend in Albuquerque. Look for a playoff atmosphere in both cities as the clubs continue to jockey for position. Longstar has four-point lead on Shreveport right now and eight points ahead of New Mexico. Number three, Shreveport Mudbugs, 29-14-2-5. Jason Campbell and the Mudbugs are 8-1-0-1 in the last 10 games and the hottest team in the NHL. After the weekend sweep of Amarillo and now sit only four points behind the Lone Star in the rush for the division's second spot. El Paso visits this week with every intention of playing a spoiler role. Will the Bugs be able to secure max points? They should. El Paso, but Odessa thought the same thing when they visited El Paso over the weekend. That didn't happen. So I think the Mud Bugs will be ready for Joe Coombs' team. The expectation is max points. They can get it. I know this. If Shreveport can figure out a way to get past Lone Star into that second position and can have home ice advantage in the playoffs, that's a heck of an advantage for Shreveport. They're hard to beat at Georgia's Pond. Number four, New Mexico Ice Wolves, 29-18, 61 points. Four points behind Shreveport today in the fourth position. Phil Fox and the Ice Wolves rocked the Rhinos in El Paso 6-0 on Sunday, ending any thoughts of El Paso spoiling any playoff plans. The result opens up the gap between New Mexico and fifth place Amarillo to eight points. The next four games are all against second place 
Brahmas starting this week at Nitex. Again, that's going to be an epic series. Four games, eight points are on the line. Number five, Amarillo Wranglers. 25, 21, 2 and 1, 53 points. Let's face it, these guys are done. Harry Mahood's Wranglers were swept at Shreveport and will try to reverse fortunes when they visit Oklahoma this week. That's not going to happen, is it? Harry Mohid's team once at the beginning of the season last year and this year, top of the, of the division, slowly and steadily dropping out of contention again, two times in two years. Amarillo, the fans diver, deserve much better than that. Maybe Harry should go to the NCDC. Good idea. Number six, Odessa Jackalopes, 24, 22, 1 and 2. 51 points, 10 points behind fourth place New Mexico. Sometimes it can be difficult to skate through the doors of opportunity. That was the case for Scott Dewar's Jackalopes this past weekend in El Paso. Instead of being within six points of fourth place New Mexico, Odessa squandered that opportunity while getting swept by the hapless Rhinos. Now the Jackalopes have 11 games to try and make up 10 points, and that's a tall order. First things first, let's see if the boys can take care of business against the ice rays when they visit this week. Is it going to happen? Can Odessa overcome this huge mountain between themselves in the playoffs? Probably not. Maybe it's time for Scott Dewar to, you know, sit down those 20 bombs, play the younger kids and so they can get some more experience for next year. That would kind of make sense. There's no way El Paso is going to catch them. So why not? Speaking of the Rhinos, when the Rhinos can clear the room of the scratchings, Joe Coombs can certainly coach. That's what happened over the weekend when El Paso opened up a can of Border Town whip butt on the visiting Odessa Jackalopes. The result all but ended any playoff hopes that Jackalopes were holding on to. Fast forward to Sunday, and it was clear the Brahmas, sorry, Messed that one up, didn't I? The Rhinos had nothing left in the tank for the visiting Rice Wolves. The Rhinos will cross Texas to Shreveport this week to take on the smoking hot mud bugs. That will be a tough trip across Texas. It's a long way from El Paso to Shreveport. You got to go 10 to 20 all the way across the Shreveport, change from the desert to the swamp. Should be a lot of fun. Number eight, Corpus Christi Rhinos. God, I'm having a great day today. Corpus Christi Ice Rays, 10, 34, 6, and 0, 26 points. The wife is sitting behind me and making me nervous. It's all her fault. Daisy, nothing. She's back there. She's just not going to say anything. Sylvie and Claudia and the Ice Rays were swept out of Oklahoma and go into this week's trip to Odessa riding a nine-game losing streak. Yes, the South can be a beast. But it's become more than clear that there needs to be a complete revision of this proud club's hockey staff. These amazing fans and corporates deserve a lot better than what they're getting this year. I like Cassidy. He's a good, good guy. He really believes in, in the ice race hockey, and he likes the atmosphere around the North American Hockey League. He's a good owner's son, and I hope that they don't let go of the team. But I would like for Cassidy to consider making smarter decisions and listen to people. Sylvie and Claudier might have been a good player in his old days as a pro, but nothing about his coaching career suggested he was ready to coach in the NHL. There are plenty of guys out there ready to take over that spot, but they weren't interested. They had their guy. This does, make it, does not make any sense. This should be better in Corpus Christi. And I hope they decide to do something different for next year because this is not working. The whole hockey operations staff needs to be reset. And get some people in there that know what they're doing, and those guys are certainly out there. They're not in Corpus Christi. That's more than clear. Expansion sister time. Colorado Grit. Those folks were not happy with last week's report. I got a ton of... Very interesting emails 
phone calls from Colorado. It's okay. I get that. I'm bound to be a little abrasive from time to time. You see, we need this club to be successful. They're in a border fight with the NCDC in the West. And if they're not successful, it's going to damage the North American Hockey League's chances of being successful out there. So it's important. New Mexico was able to hit the ice with a very strong staff, and they did well. They knew they had to get some experience in with that staff, and that's exactly what they did, and they succeeded as a result. That's not happening in Colorado. You see, this club, we need to be, to be successful on and off the ice, or we're going to see a repeat of what happened in El Paso in 21-22. That would not be good for the game or the division. Colorado did sign Big B AAA 18 forward Charlie Smith from Milford, Michigan this week. Well, there's that good news. Look, three new teams in the league. So far, it doesn't look good for any of the three. We don't know much about what's going on in New Hampshire. The league hasn't even announced it yet. They were approved at the last Board of Governors meeting. But all three of these teams are important to the league. And the South Division doesn't need another train wreck. And right now, the grit looked like a train wreck. All right. We got through that, Tommy. I, mean, I messed up a lot today. You guys tolerate this. I don't know why. Why do you keep watching this show? I don't know. I'm getting old. That's it for today. We hope that you enjoy your morning coffee and have a great day.